All right, so I told you I was going live on Discord. Did you believe me? And on Facebook. I didn't do Twitter. I didn't do so many of the... I didn't do Instagram. I didn't do... <laughs> I could broadcast live simultaneously maybe on uh, TikTok. I have a different view. Good morning. Sam, my uh, Baglamas, Baglamas has been shipped. So I'm not sure how long it'll take, probably two weeks, but maybe faster. Somebody said I'm going to have to start a, an a stringed instrument museum. They're not wrong. In fact, there was something I was just thinking about. i got to at least open up a window and do the search for it um, while I'm thinking of it. Mini... Something like that. I can't remember. Uh, that's cool. What the heck? Interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, I saw this ad. I think it was on Amazon, and I've never seen it since. Or not on Amazon, I'm sorry, it was on like Instagram or something. Um, and uh, it was like a little mini bow that you put in between the strings. It was cool, but it was really expensive. It was like $100 for this little thing. And I'm like, okay, somebody's going to come out with a cheap version of it. Um, I thought one thing I might do, oh, I got to turn on my light, hold on. Take a sip. Take a sip, everyone. I forgot to turn on my light. And I, probably my pool guy is going to bug us today because he's going to be replay, fixing a, a leak in my system today. But we'll see, hopefully. Well, you know, kind of worked to do a little uh, shout out on um, uh, on it's on. Uh, well, no, we only got eight people. Boy, it looks like there's a lot more people typing in the live chat than there are online. The uh, internet was down yesterday uh, for a while. Uh, good thing it didn't happen today. It was really windy, so I think that had something to do with it. And my hair is all crazy. That's not <laughs> from the wind. That's just from lack of looking in the mirror. <laughs> well, I guess that's from the wind. The wind blew the mirror away. That's my excuse, so I couldn't look in the mirror. Okay, so let me just do some shout-outs here. Hey, Bruce, good to see you. Uh... And I'm going to give you all an email from my nephew. Uh, I told you he does private lessons. He's a Berkeley grad um, in Boston. And uh, here we go. Where is his? I just text. There it is. Okay. His name is Tony Tibbetts. All right. I'll hide that. And so this is Tony. Uh, for online guitar lessons, you know, for Zoom lessons. Um, good kid. Um, and he's, you know, he just graduated. I think he's got student debt <laughs> a little bit. Um, and uh, he um, just graduated from Berkeley in Boston with a degree in, I believe, guitar or production. I don't know. Most, if, they're, if you're smart, you, you switch over to, production and emphasize that aspect of it. Um, 
you know, if you major in guitar in a music school, you're going to be a great, you know, you could very likely be a very good guitar player. But, um, you know, I spend probably 1% of my time playing anywhere near my level. Um, and um, so, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm managing files, managing a career, uh, <laughs> you know, uploading, downloading, strumming guitars, uploading, downloading, <laughs> strumming some more guitars. Uh, I need to, I, I actually, uh, I actually uh, had a concept for a um, music video, I think, or I mean, not a music video, a, a YouTube video. And I think I started making a list. I have to look and see if it's somewhere. Um, it would be, for the most part, beyond our discussion here. Um, but what it is, is it's, it's, it was basically titled that, you know, what they, what they didn't teach you in music school. And there's so much stuff. And, and it's kind of, it's kind of my, the business of making music. Uh, but I had some ideas that were more guitar, you know, music actually playing related. Um, and there's certain things that just every now and then I'm working and I'm like, well, well, this is not something you would have ever learned in music school. I think number one for me is, to, is how to be creative. That's why I always suggest to musicians, if they really want to like a band, if they want to be in a band and they want to start a band or something, I always suggest to go to art school, not music school, uh, because you want to be with like-minded people that want to create something new. That's going to be long lasting. That's going to be art. Um, musician, music school, you tend to study the masters. Art school, not so much. Uh, maybe in a classical art school in Europe or something like that, you might. I remember going to the Louvre in Paris and seeing, it, it kind of freaked me out when I saw people sitting with easels doing copies of other paintings. I'm like, they're letting someone with paint <laughs> sit right next to a famous painting? <laughs> it just seems highly dangerous. Um, but they were mostly older people uh, doing it. Um, and they were, and everybody was walking by and kind of looking at what they're doing and watching them. So it was very, it was a very public thing, so it would be very hard to do, you know, that. But it just seemed kind of like it was. It was. It made me nervous. Let's put it that way. Um, and uh, uh, but the, but uh, you know, music school. You're going to study. You know, you're going to study a bunch of music that already exists. You're going to be te uh, your teachers are all going to be people that had careers 20 years ago, but they don't have careers now. Uh, and not that art is necessarily different, but artists tend to create art until the day they die. And my sister is a painter. Um, she teaches at Rhode Island School of Design. Um, and she um, she's taught there for 35 years. And um, her husband, her ex-husband's a, a painter. Um, she, uh, um, and, and so they, you know, they're constantly, you know, creating something new. And I think that's what Bands, solo artists, that's a different thing. Bands, you know, it's, it's. I think about all the great bands. The Beatles met in art school. The Rolling, uh, the Rolling Stones met in art school. The Talking Heads met in art school. The Genesis met in art school. Um, Radiohead met in art school. Uh, they were, you know, because in, in England, I think, too, it's, it's such a much better program. We were just talking about this last night. It's like, by the time I was 16 in high school, I was, like, done with school. I was just like, I couldn't wait to get out and get going with my career. Um, but I couldn't, I had to stay in school. And, uh, and so what I did was I actually graduated midterm, meaning I graduated in January and then I started working in, in that first semester. I wasn't, it wasn't horribly productive, but at least I wasn't sitting in the classroom. Uh, the only downside was I had to double up on everything. My, my first semester senior year, which meant I, I was done at three every day when all my friends were done at noon. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, you're, you're your own best teacher in a lot of ways. Obviously, some people aren't really good self-starters and self-learners, and it helps to have a teacher. Some people thrive in the classroom. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if I were, someone were to ask me about music school, you know, I'd say it's fine, but don't try not to go into debt for it. Certainly. So if a young person asks me, is that Becker? Becker, you changed your uh, handle? Yeah, teaching's a career too. 
Um, but, uh, you know, if every guitar player that graduated from music school became a teacher, you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to have enough students to populate all those classrooms. So, I mean, I had a friend that was a PhD, like probably the first person in the world to have, the, about the fifth person in the world to have a PhD in guitar from USC. And he taught at um, four different community colleges. He was driving all week long, teaching at four different colleges. And he made okay money, but he was working his butt off and he was spending his, you know, this is LA, he was spending all his time in traffic. Um, no worries. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Becker, there, were, there was a discussion yesterday, or it was, uh, we were talking about, um, I forget what it was, but uh, playing rhythm and singing and playing. Yeah, and, and I'm, Becker, I'm totally fine with you uh, um, promoting your YouTube channel. Try to limit it to um, Discord if you can. Uh, not so much this stream right here. Um, and uh, um, I'm happy to direct people to you, you know, on occasion. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that we're not too much. Uh, I'm not worried about competition. Because <laughs> it's like, I didn't have anything to do with this anyway. <laughs> so this wasn't like. But uh, this all just happened. Um but yeah, so uh, just just uh, not too much uh, self promotion on the uh, on the live stream, um, links, things like that. But um, uh, but uh, if you glean some good ideas about what to teach on your live stream from my live stream, I'm fine with that. Um, you know, and I do think somebody suggested that maybe we uh, uh, do uh, do a different subject for a while, and I may do that as well. Uh, we, we we keep coming. We make keep coming back to the bluegrass thing. But once we're done with Bill Cheatham, I may go off on another a side tangent if I feel like there's something that there's a gap in our knowledge uh, uh, that is shown up through this this current series. I might try to address that. And strumming may be one of those things. We talked about strumming before, but it doesn't hurt to reiterate it. Um, and uh, it's a it's a it's a fun thing to work on. Um, and I can do some more examples of where I come up with grooves from listening to drum beats, too. I think that's, uh, you know, the best compliment I ever got was I, 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 I don't teach how to play guitar. I teach how to make music. And that's exactly right. What I'm trying to do is teach you how to, to, to uh, I teach you, I want to teach you to fish, not give you some fish. Right. Um, and, uh. And that was kind of the thing with the drum groove. It's like, oh, well, how, I, you know, how do I play drum? How do I play grooves on the guitar? Well, like, here's one way to do it. And so I'm showing you kind of a trick uh, that will at least give you some ideas and you can try to imitate it. And you can just loop the drum pattern and try to get it, you know, with your hand. You can, and the great thing about loops in, in any DAW, digital audio workstation, which is what Logic is, Pro Tools, all those things you can slow it down to speed it up. So you're like, oh man, this 120 is too fast for me. So throw it down to 20 or, I mean, uh, throw it down to 100 or 80 or whatever. Um, and uh, and so um, uh, that that's a great tool for coming up with grooves. And if it's, and if it's a drum groove you like, then it's one worth having. If you listen to it, it's like, you know, then that's not gonna be one you're gonna wanna imitate. But if it's a, if it's a groove, you're like, oh, I like that. That's a great feel. Or if you even just here's the thing. One one thing that you want to do, and I I I they do teach this in music school uh, production classes particularly, but to listen to um, to all of the um, uh, different um, parts in the song, try to get to the point where you can hear pick out the bass. And try to get to the point where you can pick up, even you can break up the drum kit. You can go try to pick out the kick drum. There have been many, many times where I'm like, I really like a, a song. And so I try to replicate it in logic. And so I just go one inch, one item at a time. I do the kick first and I do the snare and then I'll do the hi-hat. And then if there's any crashes or tom fills, I'll do those. And then I got the drums down then I go to the bass. And there are times where I've been hired to do exact knock knock uh, uh takedowns um and uh and been paid to do that and it's totally legal because they're they're paying for the right for the song they just need a version of it that is uh an original recording because 
when you when they need a song for a movie, they have to pay two licenses. We've talked about this before. A, 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 a master license, a, a, a master sync, and a copyright sync. I, I, there's better. There's more correct names for those. Somebody may know them. Um, hey, guitar dog, good to see. Um, and then uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 master is the record company, and they own the master recording. And so that's if if, if uh, you know they may ask for fifty thousand dollars, and the copyright may be fifty thousand dollars. So it's a hundred grand to get one song in a movie. Um, but if it's a if it's a if it's a cover. And even if it's a cover that sounds exactly like the original, if it's not the original, but it's a cover, uh, you still have to pay the copyright holders, the writers and the producer publishers, but you don't have to pay for the master sync. So uh, that kind of stuff happens every now and then when, where I get asked to try to come up with something. And then even pop artists will ask me to do uh, an exact takedown of a song that they want to rewrite it over a top, new top. And they, of course, they give credit to the original writers, um, but some of those things are hard to get the, the original recordings of. And they kind of want to modernize it anyway. So, um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, John is saying, yeah, you're more of a self-learner. And I'm, I'm the same way. I can figure things out. If someone te starts teaching me, my eyes just start glazing over. I stop. I don't know. I'm not a good listener, obviously. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm not Zooming this. I'm, <laughs> I'm one way. This is one way. Uh so, Guitar Dog, you, you got to go into art or music school for the love of the art, not because you think you're going to make it a living. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, my personal thing is I don't... Student loans used to be uh, a bank thing. Now it's a government thing. In fact, I own stock in Sally Mae, and I took a beating on it. <laughs> um, and uh, you can own Sally Mae. It's a, it's a, I forget the symbol for it, but... Um, but I, I really believe that the only, you know, people that should be getting student loans are the people that are going for degrees that have a distinct possibility of getting a job um, and paying it back. There's just too many degrees that are not like that. I mean, there, there are so many composers graduating from music school, you know, 20,000 every year in America. And it's like, it's like, isn't that, you know, John Williams just retired, <laughs> you know? Uh, so... So same thing. There was a joke back in the eight, uh, '80s that uh, when you got a degree from a guitar degree from Berkeley, University of Miami, um, and North Texas State, it came with a map of Los Angeles because everybody, all those guitar players, that uh, you know, I was one of the flood, but I didn't go to school for it. I just kind of just said, "Yeah, LA is where I want to be," um, and most of them went home. Most of them didn't stick it out. Most of them didn't last six months. In fact, there was a guy from Indiana that was. The one guy that was doing all the session work in Indianapolis, and he moved to L.A. and for six months, I didn't even know. He moved after I did. Um, if, if he had moved before I did, I might not have moved because I might have gotten enough work to go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting a, I have a decent living. Um, but anyway, so this, there's a, we're going we're gonna to go through this song. There's a couple things I want to point out um, uh, that um, one thing in particular um, when we play through this melody, you'll notice it's very scalier, right? It's, it's very, uh, what I would say is a lot of seconds, okay? Which means it's just minor seconds and major seconds, which is just, that's all seconds, okay? A, a G to A is a major second, A to B, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry your pretty little heads, there won't be a quiz on this, okay? Don't worry. But you remember our whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, rep? remember all our, our modes and everything we did that? I touched my face. So that's a double sip. You got to sip for the cup and you got to sip for this cup. Um, we have a drinking game here. Hey, Jay Baker, good to see you. Yeah, exactly. You have a water basket weaving. Yeah, there's some worthless degrees out there. It's just, I mean, it's just, I mean, communication degree, you should not be getting student loans for degree. Communication degree is generally the degree that... My parents told me I had to go to college <laughs> degree. Um, so, uh, but when you look at, when we look at a diatonic scale, it's, that's uh, G to A is a whole, whole step. That's the same as a major second. Okay, so when I say whole step, that means the same thing as a major second. Half step is a minor second. Again, don't worry about this. this I'm just saying this is a, is a, a precursor to what I'm going to say next. 
Okay. So when things are moving like that in seconds, you know, you kind of you kind of get into a flow. Like I look at this first phrase in Bill Cheeks and it starts on the end of bar one. Open G, first finger on A, third finger on B, back down to G, uh, A, and then to G, okay? That's all seconds. G to A is a second, a, a major second. A to B is a major second. B to A is a major second. And A to G is a major second. So you're kind of in this, for a split second, you're in this comfort zone. And then all of a sudden, the melody throws a, a, a different interval at you. So it's no longer scalier. It no longer sounds like an exercise. And as soon as it goes from that G to that B, that's a major third. So it's frustrating. This song presents the, this scenario multiple times. It's both frustrating and beautiful because it's, it wouldn't be, it would be a pretty boring melody if it went. It just would sound like you're playing up and down scales. Uh, but here we have this, there's, at that moment, you've actually created something that was didn't sound like an exercise. It actually was more of a melodic idea. The whole thing is a melodic idea, but it, it definitely, it definitely, lifts it out of just the standard scale melodic line. Um, and yet it's still in the scale. And then from there, it's all diatonic until I actually inserted this D note because I like surrounding melody notes. You know that, right? Um, but it actually, in the original uh, piece of paper I have somewhere around here, I better find it. Uh, there it is. It actually just stops on the F sharp. But I like the flow to continue. And that, in, in that, remember we practiced that where we did the third finger on the fourth fret, hit the open, and then moved our second finger to the second fret like that. And that's where we do that position shift. So for the first two measures, we're in second position. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. This, probably people are yelling. Don't forget the capo. Everybody put the capo on the second fret. That's, uh, and I've got my G7th here, which I just squeeze in place. Pretty darn cool. Okay. So we're still talking about first and second position. I don't, the capo is now zero, okay? Just for reference, John was asking that question. Yeah, well, it's not hard. <laughs> My wife's a school teacher. It's not hard to earn more than a school teacher, Catherine, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's also one of those jobs that it's, there's... Um, and that and that that's what you teach is do you teach education I, I forget Catherine what you're in you teach university I'm, I'm sure I'm insulting someone by saying teach somebody get a communications degree <laughs> Paul what degree did you get <laughs> the dibs chairs must be removed this weekend then <laughs> what's the dibs chairs? It's funny. Yeah, so, you know, and I, of course, this person, you're looking at a person that didn't get, get a degree, so. Um, all right. Okay, so. So that so my point is that that the the you know you're sitting here doing a scale and you think oh I'm just gonna you can do that no then you gotta it's kind of like a little bit of a left hand stutter or left hand like uh, aberration but it's really not because once you get it down you got it down and if you can read the tab if you can read the music even better okay the next one uh, does the same thing it's the same melody in the key of C. Uh, if we were to enumerate this, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the the um, the scale the chord values in these the melodies. So I'm playing G chord first. Melody is root second third second root third second root seventh. Okay, so we have one two three two one three two one. And here in C we have over C we have the root second third second root. Okay. So it's the same thing. One, two, three, and I'm talking about the scale tone, the relationship to the to the chord. 
One, two, three, two, one, three, two, one, seven. And th that's where it changes there on that one note. But yeah, so all I did was take the melody. Okay, it's the same melody. Um, they just took it to a, uh, um, they just modulated it, okay? Um, let me just see, if, did I add that D there? No, nope, that D is actually part of it. So that last note of bar four is actually in, in the original record, the original version that I have. And again, there's probably 50 versions of this song. This is just one. And I made a couple changes in it just so that it, it, it's kind of my arrangement, so to speak. All right. Um... Uh, so John is asking, so as a writer of music, how do you decide to go to deviate from uh, a scalar sound to an off-scale composition? Uh, well, I mean, uh, go from seconds to thirds, you mean, just like what happened here? Uh, it's purely intuition. You, When I'm writing, it's usually just like, what do I hear next when I'm writing melodic lines? Um, I... Um, and then a lot of times I'm just trying to cut new ground. So I, I try different things. I experiment until I hit something I like. So. John, God bless you for doing the VA hospital thing. That's a, that's a real, it's very cool that you do that. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm a multitasker. <laughs> You know what I really like is I love it when my computers, all my computers are all working different things. Like this one's uploading these files and this one over here is doing, you know, it's just, I, I love having all my, you know, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm the boss in an office, you know? Okay. Now the next phrase uh, is identical. Uh, the G um, bar that starts at the end of bar five. The only thing is, again, that note wasn't originally there, that A, but I put it there. Because uh, I wanted it to, um, uh, you know, bracket the next note. And I wanted it to stay just solid eighth notes. I didn't want to put a pause in there. I felt like we were going to be struggling enough. That's it. Now, um, um, and so this is the same thing. All seconds until we get to that G to the B thing. And then uh, once we get to the bar seven, which is still over a G chord, we have right away we have a, a third. Again, we, you know, we could do that, da, 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 but that's kind of boring. It's just a scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, right? So, right, we got that. And then we go, so it's almost the G scale, except it's missing the A note. And that, if you can play the G scale, you're like, oh, well, I can play this. Just because you can play the G scale, almost makes that harder because you've got the G scale programmed in your hand. Now you've got to skip a string or skip a note in the, in the uh, scale. And um, it's, it's just it, it's a little bit different than just playing the scale, so it, it, it kind of throws your hand off, throws the right hand off, throws the left hand off a little bit. So, this, but these are the these are where it gets cool. This is like where it, I could have just it, it could have just gone like that. But why? What's what's the interest in this? You know. You know. That's a really boring melody. And yet, it's almost identical to the melody that exists. But that is interesting. Because again, descending, we're on the G note here, uh, the third, uh, see, the beat four of the seventh bar. We're on that G note, okay, third fret, top string, and we're in first position, our first finger's here, okay? And then instead of going to F sharp, I go to E, Oh, so we're doing a pentatonic. No, that's that's diatonic there. So, okay. 
So it has to kind of almost... And so what you, you, you definitely have to, um, you know, take it slow, get, get, get your alternating picking going. And also, um, get, get your, uh, get, get this the whole thing memorized. Essentially. Um, I think that's going to be the best place to be because the, the, the speed that you're going to want to ultimately is going to be pretty quick. So, and again, you want to work on your, you know, your, your completely unconcerned face, your bored face, right? <laughs> That's like a bored 13-year-old teenager face. <laughs> so, uh, we could do... <laughs> and, and, um... Yeah, we could. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get too sidetracked with the singing. But we can talk about singing and playing. Uh, it's really hard to deconstruct that for me, um, and it does come into play with uh, with bluegrass because um, there's lyrics to these songs, and um, uh, I don't think Bill Cheatham has lyrics, but uh, obviously uh, down in the valley, and Wildwood Flower has vo vo lyrics too. So we didn't really tackle that aspect of it. Um, uh, we didn't really tackle uh, that aspect of it, but um, I think that probably here's 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 my thing about um, uh, oh wait, what happened? Here we go. My my uh, with with um, singing and playing. Um, you have to have the two skills down fairly good individually, right? You can't just pick up the guitar, learn a couple chords, basic chords, and never sung before and then try to sing. You know, obviously, that seems kind of obvious. But um, And as far as, like, practicing singing without guitar, uh, you could do that. Um, here's how I kind of learned how to sing. And, um, and then, because I learned how to sing away from the guitar. Um, and like I said, the, um, um, so there's, um, there is, I, I, I could make the argument that, yeah, work on the song vocally. Sing along with the recording, um, and then play along instrumentally, and get it down so that I would get to the point on with both that you you're not having to look at lyrics, you're not having to look at chord charts. You memorize both what you're going to do on the guitar and what you're going to do vocally. Um, and once you have those two individual things memorized, you have them down so well that you can start to bring them together. Now, if it's a really complex song. Uh, I see, uh, looks like Becker's talking about some, uh, um, uh, Chili Pepper song. And I remember the Chili Peppers. I saw the Chili Peppers at a party in the eighties, <laughs> in a, someone's house. <laughs> um, but the, um, the, the, the way I came about it. Um, was interesting. For one thing, I, I, I mean, I don't know about you. There's, I, I've been, never been precocious. You might be surprised by that. <laughs> but I remember, you know, I would sing in my car with the windows up, that kind of thing, along with the radio. So I could sing. But as far as really singing in a scenario where other people were going to hear me, um, this happened this way. My band was recording, and we had a four-track recorder, which is a simple four-track. And um, we were writing songs, and I wanted background vocals on a song. So I went to the studio that we had. We had our own little mini, 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 really tiny little studio. Went to the studio by myself and basically recorded my vocals. I had the mic. I, hit, I had the tape deck, and I had the headphones on and the microphone, and I'm just like 
singing it, and it was probably pretty high because it was the 80s, so everybody was singing high, and, and Kirk, the lead singer, was saying, I made him sing really high because I wrote all the music. So it wasn't a big deal for me to go and do the harmonies because I, I go, I wanted to do these harmonies. So that was kind of how I learned to really listen to my voice and try to hone it in some way. And it's also where I learned how to do, um, uh, how I learned how to do um, harmonies. And because um, it was, I had a guitar and I go, wait a minute, that's not the note I want. This is the note I want. And I tried to get it and I wouldn't. And I have to re-record and re-record. So it was, it was kind of one of those, just do it, do it over and over and over again until you get it right. And once I got it, then when we did the song live, I was able to sing the harmony. And then there was even a song that I sang lead on, which was rare. And I, so I worked at the studio and I kind of figured out exactly how I wanted to sing it. Um, in the studio, and then when I did it live, I performed it that way and had it had it pretty darn nailed. Um, and uh, that was, yeah, that was tough because I think the rhythm on that was very. The song that I'm thinking of that I did was very Talking Heads like. So the guitar part, we were a trio, so I couldn't stop playing guitar. Um, and so it was, you know, it was something like that. I think is what I did. And um, I'm trying to do this groove, you know. This kind of groove for the um, for the song, and um, uh, and then trying to sing it at the same time. And you know, when you rehearse, you rehearse a lot. So I, I got it down. I did it live a few times and embarrassed myself. And <laughs> but that was kind of the first time. So it was really getting to know something so well. Um, that, and I, you know, part, part of the thing is that, that way, and I was just on a discussion on a forum, uh, discussing, uh, nerve, uh, dealing with nerves. Um, but that way, if you know it so well, you have a lot more confidence. Also, you can close your eyes. You don't have to look at your hands. You don't have to look at the audience. You don't, there's no one out there. It's just you, your instrument and the microphone. And that's all that's there. <laughs> so... Um, okay, sorry, I got to, a lot of comments here. To oh, Becca, what are you talking about? Some. Just, um, yeah, yeah, you can you can eventually get you can eventually get uh, um, what's uh what what did what did Holly offer? <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and this discussion can totally go jump over to the um, over to the um, over to the Discord. Um, so now that you you got your guitar out. Okay, let's let's start let's start working our way through these phrases. And I, I'm going to say every phrase is going to end on the downbeat of the odd bars okay um so we got the first phrase is this that's the first phrase the next phrase is that okay um okay um the next phrase is oops and on that open g okay um, and then when, and that one is, again, that's those pivotal moments. All of those moments are the moments we're going to be moving from either second position to first position or first position to second position. Okay. So it's kind of good to get these phrases down individually. And, but in the practice of the individual phrases, you know how I am. I always like to break things down in chunks and work the chunk and then get it down next, do the next chunk, get it down and then join the chunks. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just enjoying saying the word chunk. So, um, yes, Landslide is a great song to do. Well, if you can get the finger picking down and sing it, yeah, I, it's a great, that's a great one. Um, okay. Um, and, um, but when you do, when you end the phrase, you should be in the next position. Okay. So let's do this first. So we have open D and then these three and four here. Okay, that's a B and that's a D. So basically, we got a G chord with no G in it. You could actually play G chord like this. I kind of like this voicing. I might play it more like this. 
I'm deadening the A string and the high E string, but. That's a cool voicing. I like that one a lot. Um, let's see. So, um, yeah. So I'm just. So, I'm, but that the way you finger that is that way. But I like that. Okay. So um, we're gonna just finger it with these two fingers. Okay. And again, we're in second position. So our first finger is gonna be assigned the notes at the second fret. Our second finger is going to get the notes of the third fret. Third fret finger is going to get the fourth, and we're not going to use the pinky, so we're good. Okay? And then from there we go the open G, second fret, fourth fret, second fret, open, fourth fret, second fret, open, fourth fret on the fourth string, open, open, um, open D, move your hand down and get the second fret of the D string, with, which is an E note, get that with your, hey Pepper, with, a, with your second finger. Okay, let's do that again. So again, D string open, second and third finger on the B and D. You could also just do the D and the G, okay? Not really critical to have that B in there. You could do D. I saw a lot of people do this. It seems to be pretty standard. I also saw some people do this, right? It's very, very country sounding. Just sliding in like. So you kind of create these little, oh, it's kind of woo woo choo choo train or something. I don't know, something about it just sounds kind of like hobo music. <laughs> That's kind of what we're doing anyway. Okay, so, so, and those are both, those are all quarter notes. So it's one, two, three. And then I move my hand down. Okay, so again, here's, let's go to the, the, the melody here. Open G, second fret with the first finger, third, fourth fret with the third finger, back on the second fret, open, up to the third finger note, which is the fourth fret, second fret, open, fourth fret down here to get that. I guess it's a, F sharp, not really. Open D, and then move your hand and get the E with the second finger. Okay, okay, so. And again, there's, like I said, there's a couple of thirds in there. It's mostly seconds, but there's a couple thirds in there that make it a little bit like a hip, um, like a hiccup, but um, that's what makes it a melody. If it were just, it would just be a scale exercise. Uh, but you, you, you know, if you're writing a song, try to avoid long passages of seconds and sc just scales because it'll just sound like an exercise. You got to you gotta mix it up a little bit. Here's an example of a little mix. Mixed it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to um, laser focus on the last beat, the last two eighth notes of bar two, the F sharp here with our third, third finger and the open D and then getting the um, the E note or the second fret on the fourth string with our second finger. It's like that. So we're going from here where we're in sec technically second position, open, we use that open string. We're using that open string to make our position shift. Every time we make a position shift, we have an open string that allows us to do that, okay? So let's practice this. All right, that's all I'm asking you to do. Third finger, open, second finger. Fourth fret, open, second fret. Okay. Pepper's having too much fun in school. <laughs> Now the next phrase, let's go to the next phrase. So we're bar three, and this phrase is gonna end with the open D string on bar five, okay? 
And it's going to start with the, that second fret right there. And we're going to make it two, two thirds of a C chord. We don't need to put our third finger down there. You can just play this. Okay. Now I did see some people play a seventh chord. So if you want to create a seventh chord there, instead of playing an open G string, you can put your third finger on the third fret of the G string. See that? And that creates a C7 chord. Okay, which is kind of fun. That B flat's not in the key. So that's, it creates a little, it creates a little um, uh, uh, tension. Um, it creates a, cogn a little cognitive dissonance, a little dissonance, musical dissonance. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, our, our second son was born on Valentine's Day, so <laughs> I'm off the hook. We celebrate a birthday on Valentine's Day. But Beth and I are not really big. I think because we were, when, when, you know, particularly when we first married, we had no money and we were so poor that we didn't do gifts. It was just like, yeah, we just kind of got in the habit of that. The kids are kind of even used to it. I mean, they would get gifts, but it wouldn't be a bit, you know, we wouldn't go crazy. Some of our friends, they go crazy at Christmas time. And we always set limits, you know, how much we would spend, even after we could afford to spend a lot more money. We, we still limited it because it wasn't really about that. And I took the kids to Europe, like, we took, we all went to Europe four or five, four times. So with the kids, so they, you know, they did stuff that even their friends didn't do. So, um, but I remember when Alex got, when I got Alex, it was a big gift. I got him a baby tailor. Um, and the kid, God bless him. He's such a sweet kid. Okay. He, he came out on Christmas morning and um, I put the baby Taylor on a stand in the living room and um, I put the strap on the floor. Like the, I bought him a strap to go with it so he could, he could walk around with his guitar. He came out and he didn't see the guitar. He saw the strap and he went, a new strap. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and he was like, uh, look up. And he looked up and he saw the guitar and goes, he, didn't, he couldn't even talk. <laughs> Well, all our kids were were incredibly grateful kids. We taught them gratitude. Uh, and yet some of the kids that, you know, I, I even had students that were, because I taught, you know, in Pasadena and had a lot of rich kids there. And there were a lot of kids that got everything given to them and they had zero gratitude. They were like the most, oh, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. It's like your parents bought you a $2,000 guitar and a $1,500 amp. That's amazing. And they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's like, if I did that, my kids would think I was dying. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So yeah, he's a sweet boy. Uh, he still is. He's still a sweet boy. Okay. So we're now over the C chord or the C7 if you want to get, if you want to do what some do. Okay. So we hit that same thing. We got this one, two, three. So three quarter notes and we're golden pretty slow if your tempo is really slow it's going to be slow okay then we have the same melody up a fourth so we're doing it in the key of c so we're on the first fret of the second string third fret open third fret first fret open third fret first open second string third fret and then we're going to hit jump down from that to there Okay, we might want to practice that. Let's go open B string, third fret, and then hit the D string. Okay, because those are all, even though the D string is a half, a quarter note, leading into that quarter note are two eighth notes. Now, as far as nailing the first beat of bar five over there, okay, the hitting that D string, completely irrelevant. If you hit the G string, totally fine. Um, it doesn't really matter. Although if you hit the G string, when you go to make this chord, that G string won't be ringing out anymore because you're going to be playing the third fret on it. But, and you could even do that if you wanted to. It's just not what is normally done. When I watch people playing it, they did, this is definitely part of the melody. I almost thought it was like a rhythm thing. You know, like, something like, you know, was this like, it's, it's just strumming and then going in the melody, but no. It's really technically, uh, it's played and thought of, I think is really part of the melody. It's not a rhythm. And then, okay, here comes the melody. No, this. So, 
you know, you and and I even specifically with those top notes. So you you know it's like. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not in the zone there. I'm, I'm trying to teach and, and working with two sides of my brain at the same time. Okay, so let's uh, let's work that line again. Uh, the the top the the second phrase. So we're gonna hit our second fingers here. If we want to, we can get into it, and then the chord, and then second fret or I'm sorry, second string, first fret, open or third fret, open first string. Third fret, first, open, third, first, open B string, third fret, and then D string. Okay, so that's what you want to practice that phrase. Okay, like that. That that is a little weird too. That's got that jump. You're like, well, you think you're going down. You know, you think you're going down the scale, but you're you're going back back to the D note. And you could probably do G this way too, but you really want to use this as your moment. That open D string is your moment, your opportunity to move back into back into um, uh, back into second position. And I just had a thought. Probably what happened. What I just did there, where I accidentally put my court finger and I slid up, that's probably exactly how it, that happened the first time. When somebody did that, it was like, oops, oh, it's supposed to be there. Oh, that sounded cool. Okay. Accidents are most, almost everything new, <laughs> any melodic, chordal, harmonic, whatever device, anything new is almost always accidental. So. Oh, shoot. Did I have not post, did I post this one? Did I, did I post the Bill Cheatham one? I did, right? Now I gotta look. Uh, -bum -bum, -bum -bum -bum. Tom's lesson. Oh, yeah, yeah, just the first half. I got it. Yeah, sorry. All right. Oh, I know. Getting roses. Well, in California, it's not too hard. In fact, oftentimes they're battling for your business and you get pretty good deals. Um, just on discord so yeah i'll do that i'll grab that discord link um introduction so this takes you to the intro page if i can get there <gasps> excuse me also you can join my and i think the discord link is also in the description of the video mm. Bum -ba -dum. Let me see. Uh, I'll pin this. So this is the Discord link. You can join the Discord. There's other thing, you know, things going on there. Uh, Bruce is building, uh, our moderator Bruce is building me a cigar box guitar. So you can see the progress on that. It's very generous, generous of him. Um, so if I go to edit, Discord link is there. The jam track, that's, we're not using that jam track anymore. Uh, and then there's also my Facebook there. So if you... Um, if you look at the uh, title and description of this video, you should be able to get that information also. All right. All right, so um, again, the second phrase. And this is a good time too, to when you're going slow and everything is to try to really work that uh, alternating picking thing. It's not too difficult because it's a bunch of eighth notes in a row. So that, you know, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. However, there are times where I think, you know, you're, you're, you're plucking inside and out. Sometimes, sometimes you're, you know, if you, if you were to do a uh, e economy picking, you might pluck it a different way, but uh, you really do want to try to stick with the pure alternating picking for bluegrass. Okay, so the, the third phrase is the same as the first. So we have the open D string, and then again we have this. Try this, just for fun. 
I know Holly's gonna like this. Right? Woo woo! <laughs> And like, what does it make me think of like a Good and Plenty commercial or something? I don't know. Pepper, is that right? <laughs> You've been watching a lot of commercials lately. <laughs> I'm sure Good and Plenty was just an innuendo for something, right? <laughs> okay. So. So we start with that and then we go, we're, we're in second position. So we're open, second fret, third, I'm sorry. Third finger, fourth fret, second fret, open, third finger, first finger, open, third finger down here, fourth fret of the fourth string, and then open. So the only difference between the first phrase and the third phrase is instead of going F sharp to D, I'm going F sharp to A. All right? So you want to practice that, and we can practice this F sharp. So that would be pluck that down, pluck the A up and then hit the G down and move your hand. So you got two notes on adjacent strings and you're, so you're plucking outside those strings. You're plucking down on the D string and up on the, D, uh, the G string. You can practice that if you want. Sometimes you might, if you were, if the F sharp were on the end of the beat, you would pluck that up and you'd be inside the strings. Try that. So pluck up on the F sharp, down on the A. And in this case, we're going on the outside. See, you might say, oh, the, the best way is to pluck inside, but it's it's not if it's if it if it turns your hand your right hand around and you're not, you know. Uh, economy pick it, picking wise, yeah, you you can play inside the two strings with less movement. Outside, it requires you to go further, so you got more movement. So you would think, well, if I move my hand further, I can't go as fast because I got to recover. Um, and that may be true if you were just to do those two notes. I don't know. It's about the same. I probably go. <laughs> I do it that way. <laughs> okay. So uh, so you practice that. So down, up, and then open G string, but. The most important thing to do there is to move your hand. There's your open string to get into the next position. And for the rest of the song, we're in first position. Not the rest of the song, but... And I wrote two notes there. You can just do those two notes. You can play them any way you want, or you can just play a full G chord. So uh, let's practice that phrase because this one is the this one's the I think of all of all of the melodic phrases is the funnest to play. All right, so we're gonna start with the open G string, open B string, first fret, third fret, open E string, second fret, third fret, open, third fret on the second string, first fret, open, second fret on the G string, and then open G string, and then chord. However you want to play it. And if you're reading the tab, that's fine. Um, it's, the tab is right. I had to fix the tab, remember? Um, and, uh, and so the next phrase is going to be interesting because I'm going to be doing the... I think it's... Something like that. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to learn some new triad shapes. Um, and then it, it then... But it, I forget. Uh, we'll get there. I'll, I'll, I'll have it for Monday. I'll have it uh, tabbed out for Monday. Uh, I'll figure it out by then what I'm going to do. And I just touch my face. Everybody take a sip. Muriel Anderson's great. I've seen her perform a couple times. Um, so... Uh, Yeah, it actually goes to the G. That's pretty tough. I don't know. I think we're going to go. Mm. 
And this is, this phrase is an SOB. <laughs> I want to cuss right now, but I'm like, how am I going to finger this? It's a great melodic phrase, and you've heard it before. It's actually very quoted. It's, a, it's again, probably, I'm, I'm guessing here, this was probably originally played on fiddle or mandolin. It's a mandolin tune or a fiddle tune. I'm not sure. I have to probably do more research on it. There wasn't a Wikipedia page for it. There was a Wikipedia page for the roadie Bill Cheatham, who was a roadie for the Dead Kennedys. I forget who it was. I forget. He was a roadie, and he had a Wikipedia page, <laughs> but not the song. Um, but it it fingers a lot like uh, a... Uh, a mandolin, it, like something that would be easy to play a mandolin. It's not particularly easy on guitar. So it's going to be one of those things, because I've always told you, triads are easier to play on mandolin. Triads are like playing pentatonic. On mandolin, they're just like playing pentatonic scales. They're super easy. Um, but on guitar, triads are always, these, these are triads. So it's really a right hand skill to play triads. Jack Lloyd, what's going on? Yeah, you can use you can use your different name, but just make sure we know who you are. People may forget who you are too, Jack. <laughs> when you get on there, they may go, uh, "Wait, you, what do you mean you were talking about this on the live stream? We, you weren't on the live stream." And they go, "Oh, I'm Jack. Oh, right, right. You know, you may you may have moments like that. <laughs> so, if at all possible, and you can also create multiple uh, handles on Discord. Um, well, just like you can with YouTube. So, so if you're going to, you know, but I know it's a drag. If you're going between seven different Discord, uh, pay, you know, uh, forums, uh, groups, then uh, it's probably difficult. So uh, let's see. Sip apple juice. Nice. Oh, Jim, Jim's getting the second vax, vaccine. Yeah, you be, be safe, Jim. Yeah, guitar players are dead last on the list. <laughs> Jack's, Jack's 179 lessons behind. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what you can do. Just go to my just go to my YouTube channel. Click on. I'm trying to say how, what it looks like when you're a visitor, um, but you can click on live streams. I think separate videos or whatever. I don't know. Um, if you click on videos, it probably will show all of the live streams. Uh, but you might be able to sort them out uh, if you do a search in my on my page. What's the title of this lesson? So if you yeah, but that might show up other things. But um, I have and it won't. Uh, but there, I, we we put together a list and you can click. You can go through the titles um, and some of them I spent one lesson on. Not that was very rare. The, the probably generally it was anywhere from 10 to 12, 15 lessons on one subject, sometimes five. If I did something on pentatonic, sometimes I did circle of fifths was, I think, one lesson. Um, but uh, the um, uh, if you go to uh, yeah, if you go to my channel, you can kind of scroll through those lessons and see what, what you'd like to work on. Um, I, the first thing I taught was cage method. And I think I taught it for 12, 12 lessons. Um, and, uh, the cage method is a great way to start to see, visualize your fretboard. Um, and the graphics are not as good. <laughs> I'm getting better. One, you know, I'm, I didn't have OBS. I wasn't using OBS software. I was just using the live stream. So I was literally holding up papers and having you do screenshots. Remember that? <laughs> so as before we had the discord. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a whole nother thing up on the, uh, uh, if you watch the early ones, it's pretty funny. It's almost like you can see this this metamorphosis of, of uh, I don't know if it maybe my live streaming skills. They're still not there. <laughs> I did create this. Some of you saw this. So you now I'm just freaking out. Anybody that's just joined, it's like wait a minute. It's long after nine o'clock. Okay, so uh, let's let's go ahead and do this this uh, this phrase a, a few times. Uh, I feel like this one is is the last phrase of this um, A section is probably the hardest of the four, 
And that's going to definitely be the case in the, ironically, because the, the, um, um, the B section is going to have some new skills that we're going to have to work on. But I do feel like it's just there's no good way to play that stupid. I'll, I'll pull it up on mandolin and show you how easy it is. I mean, I haven't even played it on mandolin, but I'm guessing it's it's probably once you have it's like you know it's probably like <laughs> on mandolin. <laughs> it's just like it's like wow. It's like it's like doing Stairway to Heaven guitar solo or something. So okay, so we have the open G string. We're going to start with an open B string. And then C um, on the first fret, and then D, third fret, open E, third fret, G, okay, then open, then second string, third fret, first, open, second, open, and then G chord. Okay, so I'm going to play one, two, three and four and one two three four and thank you becker appreciate it oh i forgot you're in europe one two Three and four and okay, and the idea is to memorize this. Okay, so now try it with your eyes closed. Three, four. We have a like I said. There's two spots where we're playing a third instead of a second. Everything else is major and minor seconds, whole steps and half steps. Here's the first third. There's the other third. The goal is to get it that fast. And again, I think, I really think alternating picking is the way to go. Down, up, let's see, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, sorry. So you'll start on a down and you'll end on a down. And that's how you know you did it right. One and two and three, four and one and two and three. Okay. Cheers for <laughs> cheers for being you. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that's one of the things you have to learn to embrace. I remember trying to be somebody else for much of my life, uh, and uh, you kind of, in fact, all of us do that. But uh, we'd have to try to be ourselves. Can we pay in Bitcoin? Funny you should say that. I was thinking about, I don't have a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, question, Waterman, if you are really, you know about Bitcoin, I don't. Um, if you have a wallet, can you accept any? Uh, is it the wallet hold all Bitcoins? And so it's the same number for everybody, or do you need a different number for every type of Bitcoin? And now you've got... Uh, you've got different, you know, uh, uh, you know, seven different currencies in a bit. Of course, you can transfer. I'm assuming you can transfer currencies, but I just didn't know um, uh, if you can. Uh, if I have one wallet, or do I need to have a wallet for every type of Bitcoin? And I'm assuming you say BTC. You mean Bitcoin, the actual Bitcoin. So um, I'm not. I'm not into Bitcoin. But I did download the the funny, uh, the do, the, do you say doggy, doggy? I don't know how you say it. I haven't created a login yet with it, but the Doge, Dogecoin wallet. Um, and I think that with the Dogecoin wallet, you can hold all the currencies in it. Um, and I only thought about it because I just thought, oh, you know, I should buy a little bit. But I have friends that bought uh, Bitcoin at $1,000 or, you know. Two thousand dollars or four thousand dollars, and they're like, "Well, I'm, I'm genius." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "No, you're not. You have no idea how it works." <laughs> and there's no one backing up that currency, so <laughs> the only thing you've got the promise of one guy that they won't make any more Bitcoin. 
basically. So, uh, you know, so I, I, I have no, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, so again, let's do this pattern. One, two, and three, and four, and. fast if you have it memorized if you're doing the correct picking and you stick with it and it's easier to do fast if you start out slow weird but um and you and notice that um now that i did an f natural instead of an f sharp you could totally do that you can take liberties if you're playing this song you're if you're the artist playing it you can do whatever you want you know I'm sure there's people that do the F natural. It's kind of like, um, where is it? No, is it? No. Right? Some people, but others, sleeves I've seen both ways and and, <laughs> and people say no the cor correct ways no not uh, but you could go back and forth in the same arrangement of it and the same thing with this you, you know you could do the F sharp because I really like I love the sound of that F natural over the C chord it's just like Because that F sharp over the C always sounds so litty and it sounds like a movie score. <laughs> yeah, green S leaves. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. Bruce, I don't. <laughs> if you want to update the list, uh, the uh, list, because the, the lesson list is pretty stinking boring for the last 12 weeks, right? Literally, I think we've done. That 36 lessons now, 12 times 3 is 36. So 36 lessons in bluegrass. But you could probably insert when we started working on Wildwood Flower. And then you could go, you know, bluegrass lesson and Wildwood Flower. And then those for a few few days. And then bluegrass lesson uh, uh, down to the valley. And then, or down in the valley. And then bluegrass lesson Bill Cheatham. You can do that, okay? Um uh, now, one thing I said I was going to do and I haven't done is, is I was going to record a rhythm track, but I actually, I'll, I'll do that on my own time. I mean, because it literally wouldn't take me very long. And I think you would enjoy kind of almost watching that. I'd rather almost have the computer, I mean, the screen somewhere else. But, um, uh, but um, the thing is, I'm going to, I'm going to record it at 100. And for me, I would want to record it like at least 150. I don't think that the like, flat pick apprentice let me check and see if he has a um a jam track for this one he might but i don't know if bill cheatham's on here oh there it is practice tracks look at this what key is he in though wow 180 is his first one That's awesome. This is so, he, he is such a cool guy to do all this. 
Okay, so it, and it goes for two minutes, two, almost three minutes. Um, so here's the one I was just playing. Believe it or not, it's a it's a giant Dropbox link. So check this out. See it? Oh, who's taking off? Yeah, I, I still may do a jam track, but I don't know. This one's pretty dope, uh, and and that's just 185. Okay, so uh, here's the the web page. It's a it's a, a, a blogspot page. Um, and you can see on the right hand side he has all the jam tracks. And so you click on a name, and in this case, or a song, name of a song, this one says Bill Cheatham. Uh, it he has it goes up to 240, which is about 33% faster than so he has 180 and 240. So let's see what let's listen to 240 and see what that sounds like. That may be the the top range. I don't know. One, two, three, four. And maybe start out. Oh, we went to the B section. Dang it, I forgot the B section. <laughs> Dang. I'm like, wait, the chords aren't right. Okay, let's go to the top. I forgot. One, two, three, ah. four. Shoot. Two windows open at once. Wait, stop. Uh, how do I do this? I'm going to have to go like this. That's pretty fast. 240's, two forty, two forty shredding. Uh, but yeah, that's a bookmark that. Uh, bookmark that page. And uh, you know, I gotta make sure I'm not on. So I'm at uh, ninety thousand four hundred nineteen subscribers. Um, I got a, I got a few new subscribers yesterday when um, the guy that composes all the music for uh, Apex Legends promoted me on his, he's got a huge Twitter following. So he promoted me on Twitter and um, that resulted in a pretty darn good. Um, okay, oof, burr. Oh, hey Whitson. Dude, I was checking out your YouTube video. I subscribe, by the way. You now have nine subscribers. <laughs> I'm not ridiculing you. It's just um, uh, you uh, sound great. You sound great. I love. It was a slide thing, and you were frustrated that you couldn't get your uh, your your video sync. I I and you you probably are a PC user, so that's why you don't have iMovie. But I just use iMovie for mine. I've used Filmora, but I don't like um, the uh, something about the compression or the conversion makes it it I it just makes things look grainy to me and a little bit harsh on the white tones. So yeah, we're gonna have a celebration. I don't know what to do, but <laughs> and then I get and then they'll send me the plaque, which is cool. I'll definitely hang that plaque. That's gonna be like I told you. That's that'll probably go up. You know, I don't know. We'll find a spot for it. Maybe behind the door. <laughs> I'll put it. I'll put it right there. I'll put it right there. Because it'll always be in the shot, which is cool, if I have that door open or closed. Um, you notice, do you see what I have on there? I have flannel shirts hanging on the door. See that flannel? And two reasons. One, if I need a flannel shirt because I'm cold. I'm kind of getting a little chilly right now. And two, um, because it cuts back on reflections in the room. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'll have two or three flannel shirts on each hook on each door and um, it, it'll help cut back on some of the f flutter on the top end. So, great lesson, really? <laughs> kind of felt like, well. So, uh, yeah, so that Flatpick Apprentice, bookmark that site. He, he's, uh, it's really cool. In fact, I think he's kind of in the same boat. He's learning. Um, and then the, see, I think... 
Did I close that window? Why did I close that window? Um, let's see. Does he have... So he doesn't have a page for that song. He does have the practice tracks for it, but he doesn't have... Um, any, oh, he updated January, so he, he, this year, so he's, he, he, you know, he's up there about every other month he does something. Bill Cheatham is just jam tracks. Send him a note, too. I mean, you can always put a note there. It's like, promoting your site on my YouTube channel. As I type. <laughs> I don't think he makes any money from this, so I should send him something. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, is there even a link for, like, to send him coin? I feel like I should send him something. Just like I feel like you should send me something. <laughs> Becker, thank you. Um, and, and, oh, also, uh, let me try to, um, let me resend, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put this, I'll put Tony's email address, my nephew's email address up at um, the Discord site, okay? So that you guys can, uh, where would I put that? Just general chat. My nephew. No, it didn't. Okay. I thought I copied it. Hold on. Maybe it won't let me do it. Oh, it did. Okay. So, Tony, Tony J, Tony J Tibbets at gmail.com. Um, and, uh, he can he can do live stream stuff, you know. But you know he's studied at Juilliard. I mean Juilliard uh, at Berkeley, so he's um, uh, well schooled in pedagogy, I'm sure, and also um, can teach all different levels and different styles too. So yeah, no that no Whitson, I thought you sounded great. Um, uh, yeah, so iMovie I think works pretty good, but if you don't have a Mac, you know you're not gonna have iMovie. But iMovie is totally free. Um, I actually paid for the upgrade of Filmora and I'm just, I thought, oh, because it has all these other features and I thought I'd use them. And I'm like, you know what? All the stuff, all the, the even the text and everything just looked cheesy to me. I don't know. It looked too high schooly. It didn't look very professional. I, I probably should get Final Cut Pro. It's only 300 bucks. Um, and maybe I will um, when I get my, well, I like to have it on my laptop. Yeah, only 32 watching. Gosh. <laughs> no, actually, I shouldn't be 32. I'm so thrilled that you're all here. Um, and the other thing, you know, if I had 32 people in a classroom, that would be a full class for the most part. Right, Catherine? <laughs> Catherine. Oh, Catherine's still here. I mean, Catherine's our, our resident professor. What do you teach again, Catherine? I forget. I got to be careful what I talk about because I always like to pretend like I'm an expert at everything. <laughs> Like I know everything there is to know about everything. Yeah, you know. No, it's what is it when you're in your twenties, you you think you know everything, and then you realize in your thirties that your parents were a lot smarter. You know, you think you're smarter than your parents, and then you realize in your thirties that your parents are a lot smarter than you, and all that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. Hit the like. Oh, and share. Always share. You know, I don't know how many of you are on any kind of music forums, but you know, like I said, when I've gotten my Spikes and I just got one, a little one yesterday from when, um, said a nice thing. In fact, I, I should just screenshot it. Um, when, uh, Steve Martin did a shout out and, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, here it is. Do a screenshot of this. Oops. Let me, there we go. Um, he said, since so many have asked on various forums and social media, the Fuse guitars are the awesome work of at T. Straley, who has played the vast majority of anything related uh, guitar related on Play Apex. 
he even has a regular YouTube channel where he teaches his this stuff. And so I got a lot of uh, viewers. Thank you, Guitar Dog. God bless you. <laughs> just, I was just hawking for. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, oh, you know, I'm going to move this over here because I move this. That looks better. And then move that there. And then I'm going to center this a little bit. I'm not, I'm not OCD, but I, it just looks better that way. Okay. Uh, so like I said, Monday, we're going to start attacking this D section. So get ready. Um, I kind of kept up with that 240 BPM, but I don't think I could do the B section at 240. Um, that was pretty stinking fast. And that's... That's how it goes. All right, hold on. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? Oh, it's in. Well, I'll play it in G. Hold on. Okay, everybody take, well, you can take two sips because I left the room. That's one sip of our drinking game. And I changed instruments, so that's another game. Oh, uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. oh, in, uh, phrase, in phrase three, okay to hammer on C to, C to B, phrase three. You mean, oh, he left. Okay. Sorry, Michael, I didn't see it. Um. Just tune this. Uh, and I, you know, when I see people play this, keep in mind this is in really in the key of G. I mean, in the key of A. It's, the, it's really the B section that I'm curious about. Because the A section plays down on guitar pretty nice. I think my battery's dying on my snark. It's getting so dim. Also, I have this light in my face. Now, I usually tune my G string a little flat because it, when I play that note, it tends to be sharp. So I usually try to tune this note. I'd rather be flat than sharp. I don't know. It just sounds better to be flat than sharp. Oh, Michael's here. Okay. Um, are you talking about uh, the, the uh, bar... Because uh, the only time it goes to a C note, well, no, oh, oh, the second phrase has a C note, and the third phrase has a C note in it. Um, so you mean pull off? Um, you can pull off as long as, I'm fine with pulling off, as long as you keep your alternating picking going. So in place, if you're talking about, and I don't have my guitar in my hand, but if you're talking about the, um, uh, the let's see, would be the, uh, It's always an adjustment to go to mandolin because it's tuned in fifths. It's totally tuned different than a guitar. Although, just a, 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 a mandolin hack, uh, the strings on a mandolin are upside down bottom four strings of your guitar. So if you visualize a G chord like this, right, the bottom four strings, just play that here and that was a G chord. Okay, you see that? That's a G chord on mandolin. On a guitar, a G chord would be like this, flip it around. Now a D chord, if you played a D chord and then brought your thumb around and got that F sharp, right? So now you got two zero zero two three two. Um, if you play this the bottom part, like that, there's a G, there's a there's a G chord. So you imagine E chord, E is uh, zero two two one zero zero. So if you play like this, you just flip that over, and there there's an E chord. Okay. So that's a that's a great hack if you want to pick up a mandolin, play some guitar chords on it. You can totally do it. Um, open chords, and then you know of course that these are all major, and the third is right here, so I can make it G minor. A minor, 
and the top string is the same as the E string, so that makes it easy to at least get that string down. Okay, so the the melody is uh, on the. See, yeah, that. It's still a little bit of a tongue twister. Uh. And then, well, it's the last phrase really that I thought was like, okay, this has got to be. Oh, that. Yep. See, it's easy on. Oh. So I say. That that list bit is is tough because you got to go fifth fret on the uh, second string to the fifth fret of the third string. But, uh, but yeah, that last phrase isn't too bad, as I suspected. Anyway, uh, work is calling. Okay. Oh, and I did. I I'm sure Catherine said it, and I didn't see it. Let me let me see if I can find it. Uh, where I asked her, what's your major? Uh, professor, I love my job. I have a wonderful group of students. Oh, in my, your lab. Okay, so you're, you're STEM, which is, God bless you. That's awesome. So, yeah, you're, you're actually teaching something that they'll get a good paying job about. Uh, can you touch your face a bit? <laughs> As Lynn is thirsty. Okay. But I just changed guitars and left the room. I'm going to change guitar again because uh, uh, Michael was asking me about the... the <coughs> <laughs> Taking your finger off. I mean, uh, I think so. We, were you saying to go? I mean, if you can get, if you can get it to work, then fine. Um, but again, I try to keep the hand. So if you're going like that, you're going to do that third phrase, second phrase, C, D. D so it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. You're going to do two ups in a row. So you might want to practice that little section there. Up, pull off, up, down. Okay. Okay. That way you you keep, you can keep the alternating pick thing going. All right. Neuroscience. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That, see, that's, and a college professor is also generally not paid very well, especially adjunct. That's become the big thing. It's so hard to get tenured anymore. Um, and my sister's never, I don't think my sister, she's been at RISD for 35 years. She's not tenured. But, well. Yeah, a lot of squirrel herders today. It's all right. Um... I don't know if I had enough for a two-hour lesson today or anywhere near it. I never do. Yeah, we got to work on our flamenco, right? That's the next thing, right? Let's see. Um, what else is going on? <laughs> pretty, pretty brainy stuff. Yep. I have a, a good friend that's a was a neuroscientist or a neuro. Yeah, he was a he's he actually was one of the few people in the world that could perform brain surgery and program in COBOL and all the different programming languages. Um, and so he got a job working with a company that made a, um, he actually, a, kind of a sales rep job. It was kind of like, really? But it paid a lot of money because he was traveling a lot, and uh, but he was 
was working for a company in San Francisco that makes um, a, uh, a laser um, for cutting out brain tumors. Um, and uh, they, uh, he was like one of the few people that could actually communicate to both doctors and to computer programmers. Um, and so he could talk in both their worlds. And so he would take the issue, you know, he would explain to doctors how the programming works and he would have any issues the doctors have, he would take it to the programmers and he was, uh, you know, and then, and then the housing crisis, the bubble crashed and everything. he lost his job. It's like, oh man, he's a postdoc at Caltech. That's how smart he, postdoc at Caltech, you know, where, where Einstein taught. The smart guy, let's put it that way. It is Friday. Hey, Alan Floyd, what's going on? Everyone in my family and my music teachers told me not to study music and I, I would be poor. <laughs> Probably true. Uh, yeah, in some ways, not poor in spirit, maybe financially poor, but that's not, I'm sorry, but I could, I could fly to, to some place in rural Africa and go to a, a village where to me, they look like they have nothing and the kids are all having a blast and everybody's smiling. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, it's rare. I, you, you would have a hard time finding a place like that anymore, but you know, where there wasn't even like self, you know, you still, you go to someplace like that. I'm shocked. always shocked to see, oh my gosh, that's right. They have iPhones. I forget. <laughs> you just think it's everybody living in huts. It's like, not really. Uh, but there are places like that, but it's like the people with the least oftentimes tend to be the happiest. So just because you're poor financially doesn't mean you're going to be poor in spirit. Uh, so uh, I have a t I have a hard time discouraging people from going into music because that's what I chose to do. So it seems a little hypocritical. Um, but I do have people that will want like I'll have occasionally I'll go you know go to have you know a kid take me to coffee. And I want to ask you about the business and everything. I want to do what you do and and so um, I. Uh, will often tell them, look, you know, every path in this, see, if you want to be a biologist or a, an engineer or even a doctor, as hard as that is, uh, the path is pretty well laid out. And as long as you keep hitting these steps and everything, you're going to end up with this specific career that you're seeking out. You get to, you can be a prop. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Meyer. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, I look forward to see. Yeah, I, I, I miss you. I wish I could see you. Well, I saw you in that Zoom. We'll have to do another Zoom. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, we'll, maybe next week we can do another Zoom, okay? Um, and I saw the discussion about me cutting a lesson. I don't think I'm going to do that anytime soon. Um, I, uh, um, again, I, it's got to, you know, I really do want to do more videos, and but I, I really feel like if I spend more than 10 hours a week on my YouTube, I, it's, it's at the detriment of my other endeavors. Um, so, you know, I have to, if, if I, if it takes me four hours to create a, you know, to film and create and conceptualize a video and everything, then, then that, all that leaves is the six hours we have together, which I could cut that. I could keep going every day and try to be disciplined about doing just one hour a day, every, every time. I mean, I could keep doing three days a week. Um, yeah, ready? Yeah, exactly. You know, Alan Floyd. Yeah. It's, I'll tell you the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I love what, uh, the dirty jobs guy said, he said, look, don't do your passion, have a passion for what you do. Um, I always use the example. I, 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 you know, I said, look, back in the day, you could go to this, there was this block long, and I think they had them in New York too, but in Hollywood, they had this block long magazine stand. It was huge. And it went around the corner. I mean, it was massive. And they had all, you know, they had 40 different guitar, you know, if I wanted to find guitar magazines from all over the world, they were there. I'm like, Dang, man, you know, there are enough people into guitar to keep all these magazines going. And then I, you walk down and you see, oh, wait a minute, there's plumbing magazines. Here's one just about faucets. Oh, here's one about, you know, old houses. Here's one, you know, it's like their plumbers are just as passionate about their job as guitar players are about theirs. Um, and that's exactly right. Whatever you do, find a passion for it so that you look forward to going to work every day. If you hate your job, then you know, but, oh, but I really want to be a ballet dancer. But if you weigh 400 pounds and you're 60 years old, you're not going to be a ballet dancer. So, you know, your passion is not necessarily a reality. Um, 
Now, that said, <laughs> what did I do for a living? Well, I up and moved, left everything I knew, everyone I knew, and went to a place where I didn't know anyone or anything. And said, here I am, okay, now I'm going to do it. And I didn't know what I was doing. There was no path. And like I said, with, with engineering and with doctors and all this stuff, you've got paths you can take. You, you could try to emulate any artist, guitar player, musician, band, the band's track. You could emulate everything they did. Like Justin Bieber is kind of a perfect example. He's like the first, probably the first YouTube pop star, right? He got big on YouTube. And then they got, well, and he wasn't even that big on YouTube. He got discovered on YouTube. And then they they turned him into, you know, well, they didn't turn him into Bieber, but, they, you know, they made a record with him. And it did well. Um, and they had no idea. They, it could have been a one-hit wonder kind of thing. They That's kind of almost what they assume in these scenarios. Um, and it turned into something else. But you had a thousand other people trying to emulate his pathway. Uh, get discovered on YouTube, get a record deal. And that happened with a lot of people. Uh, Madison Beer. Um, but... She's, she's not as big as Justin Bieber. Um, who's the blonde girl that's a really good guitar player, and she's a great singer. And she's she's kind of a, a triple threat. She's cute, she's a good singer, and she's a good guitar player. I can't think of her name offhand. Um, she's a believer, Christian, um, and she's pretty big. She tours the world, and, you know, uh, she, uh, I think Scooter managed her, manages her, too, and Madison. So Scooter, you know, tried to emulate this, and, and I'm sure he's made money on all these artists. Um, God bless him for that, but... Um, oh, <laughs> what's with Sam? Uh, these days you could go into Amazon and visit every yeah, and and they'll look up who you are on Wikipedia. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I know that the Great Reset is all about us not owning anything, but I'm not a fan of that because I don't want anybody else playing my guitars or driving my car. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Uh, and I, or walking into my house, it's like with the, 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 the idea is that you won't own anything, that you'll rent everything you own. And, uh, I'm like, well, that means it can be shut off at any moment. And I'm like, no, if I own it, it's like having an old software on your computer. It's like, yeah, it's working for me. Why update? You know, the only, you know, at some point you're going to have to, I suppose, but you know, so. Yes, we are all living in a capitalist society. It's true. Uh, but we're not all living in a free market society. But all, everything is based on capital, whether the government has all the capital or whether we have some of the capital. <laughs> and it, regardless, you look at the dollar bill, it says the United States on it, so it still belongs to them. And they could tomorrow say it's no good. But I don't think that would happen. Um, okay, so... Kind of a weird tangent to talk about squirrels, Holly. <laughs> what did Bruce say that you're laughing at? When Tom started these lessons, he said it was going to be 30 minutes. I know. I've done two hours and 30 minutes before. What's the longest I've ever done? Anybody know? That's a good, that's a good trivia question. I'm liking these strings. I've got a box of them coming now. I ordered a box of the Elixir uh, 8020 bronze. Um, I'm put, these are mediums. And you know what? For this stuff, I like this. I like the solid. The, you know, they're almost faster because they're not as squishy. They're tighter because the strings are heavier. The, to get to the pitch, they have to be a little bit tighter. They're harder to bend, but I don't ever bend on acoustic, really. I might do slides, but that's not affected by... In fact, it's easier on a heavier string than on a thin string. How do you know that, Aslan? Oh, did you just... <laughs> Aslan just sorted my videos by length. Holy... No, 420. I did not do 420. There's no way. 420. Haha, ha. you got me to say 420. <laughs> AJ's laughing right now. Get me to say 69 next, right? <laughs> Uh, yes, I do. Uh, no, you're, you're fine. You can ask me about money. I do make money from YouTube, yes. 
when people tip me, I make, I get that. Um, I think I get 70% of that, just so you know, which I'm fine with, 100% fine with. YouTube is making all of this possible, so don't feel bad that, like, oh, man, I'm only giving Tom, you know, 350 when I give him $5 or whatever. Uh, that's totally fine because it keeps the channels open. But YouTube also gives me, I get ad revenue. And because I have a certain number of spins, you know, it's it's not, you know, I used to, back when I started, you know, I was making $3 a month or whatever, and I was like, wow. And it went up to $7, and then it went up to $12, and I kind of liked the kind of parabolic, you know, geometric uh, arc to the to the growth. And I told my wife, I said, hey, if it gets to $75 um, a month, I'll pay for my Starbucks. And, um, oh, wow, Max Likes are 79. That's crazy. Um, that's funny. Uh, I can't. I, oh, your eyesight blur. Yeah, Pepper. I know. Uh, I I can imagine. Oh my gosh, how many of your books though are on your iPad? Um, but yeah, so it blew past seventy five dollars. So I make, I make actual real money, um, on a monthly basis from YouTube, and um, I should because I put a lot of work into this, um, and um, also you know into all the videos I have, and they're all like little annuities. Now I just recently just looked with you guys. I was um, clicking on some of the uh, videos and some of them didn't haven't hadn't had a single spin in the last, um, in the last week. So it's that, you know, maybe that video has run its course and nobody will ever watch it again. I don't know if they, if they search for something that you know, they hit the right keywords and I've entered the right uh, tags and all that stuff. It might show up in someone's a search thing, or they may just decide, oh, I'm going to go watch all of Tom's videos, which would be ridiculous. But um, there's a lot of videos up there. And um, so generally it pays, like every view pays about a third of a penny, something like that. Um, sometimes it's a half a penny. It depends on the ads. Um, so if you're looking at a million views of something, you're talking, you know, three to $5,000 generally. Um you know, so you add up all the views on my channel and it's, um, I don't know, you, you, it's not, so you take that, you take that, um, m that math and you go to my channel and you click on the about, I have a total of 7 million, uh, let's see, 7 million. 400,000 views. So 7.4 million views. So let me pull up a calculator. And then I get a check every month. Say, you know, direct deposit. 7400000. Right? Oh, no, that's 74 million. 7.4 million. So that's. Yeah. Times. And so basically, be 0 0.03 would be 3 cents. 0 0.003 would be. 0.3 cents equals so twenty-two thousand dollars basically is what it says. Sounds about right. It's probably pretty close. Oh, but keep in mind I've been doing this ten years. So over a ten-year period, it's not a lot of money, but it's 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 increased. I don't want to say exponentially because it's it flattens out in periods and goes up and down and everything like that. But uh, yeah, we're live. Yeah, yeah, we're live at Saturdays at at, uh, at yeah. Um, now I'm not, I, as soon as the worship's done, I leave. So I won't be around at the end of service, just so you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going live. People are wearing masks and generally separating, although the, the, uh, rate, the counts are down so low and, um, uh, getting, getting older is not for the faint of heart. Yes. My eyes are so bad. I, these are trifocals. Um. Yes, that, yeah, paper books. Yeah, the, Jack was doing the same thing. My son Jack, when he was at, at USC, was he had some books online and some books he had to buy, and he uh, he was he was using Chegg. Do you use Chegg at all? And if you have if you have the books on your through Chegg, do you, can you print them up if you want to? I mean, I know it's a lot of paper, um, but it's easier to mark them up. 
on paper. I like, you know, the thing is, my I have, uh, Austin, one of my composers, he's like, you know, don't print it up. You know, don't, don't print up the, just use an iPad. And I'm like, yeah, but I like, like, I'm going to show you an example of a chart, you know. Where's the first page? Oh, here it is. So, like, you know, this is just something that from a, a this is from Watch Dogs, uh, a game called Watch Dogs. And it's actually, that's a bass. You can see the bass clef there. So I was playing bass on it. Um, and I like printing this up. I could have an iPad, yes. But I spend so much time looking at computer screens that I consider looking at this a break. And I don't, the paper, the cost of the paper and the ink is minimal to the, the saving my eyes. Uh, I, I can't get my eyes back if they go away. And keep, when I'm blind in one eye and my good eye is really bad. So someday I'm probably going to be completely blind, but um, I get tax write-off. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I may be deaf before I'm completely blind. They're, they're both going to happen at some point, but uh, um, yes. Okay, Pepper, I get the kids used to, well, the kids are used to it, but yeah, when I look at my phone, I take off my glasses. Yeah. And Beth does the same thing. It's And I have bifoc trifocals, so I should be able to see it. But for me, it's much more comfortable to look at it without my glasses on and hold it up close. Um, and so people kind of, when I'm looking on my phone, they're like, what's wrong with your eyes? I'm like, whatever. Um, the, the other thing about the iPad is it can read. Oh, you're right. It can. That's right. It can do that. That is a nice thing. I forgot about that. Your parents are going to kill you. What, what's that? Why is that? Uh, Got to sign off. Good lesson, Tom. See you later. Hope you all have a good week, groovy weekend. Okay, Aslan. Your parents go, oh, because you're spending so much time on us. Yeah, so we're talking about, I mean, somebody brought it up and it was a squirrel that I chased after um, about doing music for a living. Um, and so when I, when somebody, like a kid takes me to lunch and says, oh, I want to do what you do. I said, well, are you willing to starve for 25 years? until it happens. And they're like, you know, are you willing to wait 25 years for it? No, no, no. I, I want it to happen now. I want to travel the world. I want to be rich. I want to be able to buy, I want to have guitars given to me. I'm going, well, good luck. And I, it's happened to some kids, n none of, nobody that I've necessarily counseled, but um, I know some young people that are millionaires, very young people. And I'm not talking about Bieber. I'm talking about young, young musicians that got lucky and wrote a hit song, you know, um, and, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a blessing, but I am kind of glad I didn't get a lot of money in my youth. I mean, I don't know. I think I would be a completely different person. I appreciate the, the income I have now far more than I think I would. Although I've always been kind of an adult when it comes to this kind of stuff, I've always been a practical person. Um, I've always been in the stock market. I've always had, um, long-term views of things. You know, I, 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 I was buying stocks, you know, I told you this when I was seven years old, I saved up my quarter a week allowance, which was, uh, it took me, let's see, a quarter a week, that's going to be $13 a year. It took me a year and a half to buy a $25 savings bond. So I saved up my quarter a week allowance for a year and a half. I had $17 that I could use to buy a $25 savings bond that wouldn't mature until I was 21. Now, no one told me to do that. My dad wasn't saying, you need to save your money and do blah, blah, blah. No, no. In fact, you know, my dad probably would, you know, that wouldn't even occur to him. <laughs> I don't know where I got the idea from when I was seven to do that. I forgot I had the thing. I, I discovered it literally two years ago. I found it in some paperwork and I cashed it in. And it was, still, it was only worth $25 because that's where it stopped. The government was using my $17 <laughs> that, I, that I, like for a kid, it was like, oh my God. They use that money for all these years. It was hilarious. I think it was worth 25 bucks. And I had to pay tax on it. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh. It's like so stupid. But that's kind of how my brain when I was when Beth and I were making next to nothing, I was still putting $25 into McDonald's stock or $25 into Walmart stock or $25 maybe in three stocks at one month, you know, with Intel. And I sold Intel. I sold uh, McDonald's and I sold Walmart and that was a big chunk of our down payment for our house. It was probably a third of our down payment for our house. Um, and I've been buying that stock since I was in my twenties, 
twenties and thirties. So yeah, it's, it's, I've always had that long, uh, long-term view, uh, career wise, uh, savings wise. Um, I, I've never had the get rich quick mentality. I don't even understand it. Um, I've, I've seen a thousand times the, uh, the carnage from that on on spouses, on relationships, on families, on careers. Um, I know people have gone to prison for not declaring income that they made as a musician, uh, um, and that's you know that's a thing. When I you know I do my taxes, I pay a lot of taxes because I do them right. Everything's hundred percent legit. You know I don't I don't ultimately have that many write offs, so I end up having to and I have to pay. Remember I have to pay self employment tax, which is fifteen point three percent. Of everything I make, um, and at least up to 120 grand or something. Um, but basically, what I'm doing is I'm paying both sides of the of the unemployed uh, of Social Security uh, when you're self-employed, and then I have to pay income tax, and I pay state tax, and of course I have sales tax, and all that. So, you know, it's it's a uh, business tax, and all that stuff is uh, it all adds up. I coupon, yes, uh, that was one of the things. In fact, I I had a a, a little. People were always like, how do you, you know, do this and do that and everything. I actually created a document. It's around here somewhere. I bet I can find it where um, Tom's money saving tips and couponing was one of them. And I'll tell you why. For one thing, there was a period of time in L.A. where they would triple coupons. So if you had a 75 cent off coupon on a box of cereal, they would they would give you 225 off a three dollar box of cereal. You're getting a box of cereal. So I was getting tubes of toothpaste for a nickel. So I would, we had like <laughs> stacks of toothpaste. I, you know, I was doing it, but here's the other thing about uh, saving money. Okay. Uh, so, and Dennis, this is really relevant for you. Um, well, I mean, it's relevant for any of us to pay taxes, but it's like, okay, how, how hard are you willing to work to save a thousand dollars on a car purchase? So say you're going to buy a car. And the car is, you know, $28,000, but you found out you could, you could get it for 27,000. If you go over here, if you do a little research or if you drive maybe across town, you can get for a thousand dollars off. And you're like, well, but thousand dollars, you know, is it worth my time to go, you know, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Uh, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, no, 15.3% is just part of my tax. I pay about 50% tax, 15.3%. That's just social security. Normally when you're an employee, you pay um, only 7% of that, and the employer pays the other 7.5%. So uh, you're technically paying it, but you just don't realize. You're paying it with lower right wages. Uh, so I get a full wage, and then I have to pay both sides of it. Um, so, But yeah, no, typically, in America, the taxes are lower, uh, but we also don't have you know free health care and free education and free lots of other free stuff, uh, which I'm fine with. I'd rather not do that, but... Um, uh, I'm, I'm fine paying for it. I feel like, um, uh, but um, yeah, California is brutal for taxes. Yep. Um, I yeah, it's it's. It, I have a friend that's actually probably going to move to Texas where there is no sales tax or income tax because it's probably going to save them uh, enough to make a house payment. It, probably about five thousand dollars a month is what it's going to save them, um, and uh, just in California taxes, it's crazy. Uh, but um, uh, the one thing, good thing about California tax wise is that, and I pay ten grand in property tax every year. Uh, the the property tax is uh, Prop thirteen freezes them, so I will never pay. I mean, I will only pay fractionally more for property tax every year, even if my house triples in value. Uh, so, but if I sold my house, the new person would have to pay the new rate. Um, but the, but about the thousand dollars. So you know, here's the thing: how how hard do you have to work to make a thousand dollars? So in other words, if you're at a fifty percent tax bracket, um, you've got to make two thousand dollars to take home a thousand dollars. So if you save saved money is tax free income. You actually by saving driving across town or maybe having to make some phone calls and spend a couple days hunting to save a thousand dollars. It actually you would have had to work and make two thousand dollars to have that thousand dollars so yeah but that's on the macro on the micro a coup, coupon's the same thing clipping that coupon that dollar off coupon if if you're at a 50 percent tax bracket that's a really really it's a two dollar off coupon because it's saving you have from having to work for two dollars to to save that one dollar 
Does that make sense? Yeah, I, no, that's why I don't live in Europe. <laughs> so I have friends from the UK that pay no taxes because <laughs> they because they live in the US and, and I'm like, how does that work? And they go, uh, well, <laughs> they're they're kind of like, um, she double cupped it. That's funny. Um, but yeah, I'm yeah. But we also, like I said, we don't have nationalized health care. But I like I like paying extra to get a good doctor. So. Um, I don't want to, I don't want someone to decide what doctor I can see. I want to decide that. So that's why I like paying for it. Um, yeah, well, and also, yeah, I agree, Becker. Also, the, the getting rich quick thing, people will compromise um, things, whether quality or themselves personally to get rich quick. Um you know, I could be doing, <laughs> instead of a YouTube channel, I could be doing an OnlyFans <laughs> and make a lot more money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what is a coupon? A coupon is just a thing that comes in a newspaper, usually a Sunday paper, where it's money off of, uh, or you might say in Europe, in England, you might say coupon. I don't know. Coupon. We Coupon. Some people say coupon. That bugs me. I hate that. I like coupon. Coupon is correct. Uh, but it just you if if an item costs four dollars and you have a dollar off coupon it now it's only three dollars you know I don't really do that anymore it's not worth my time so okay Paul cheers Paul you know what it's eleven it's been two hours I don't want to set a record here and I definitely want don't want to go four twenty <laughs> so four twenty is not even a thing anymore in California because it's legal so four twenty was the the federal code for marijuana is that right. 420? Is, is that what it came from? So everybody would light up on April 20th. I remember that was a big thing in Colorado. So, um, anyway, I will, uh, I will see you all on Monday, Lord willing. And, um, uh, we can, we will start working on the B section. We're going to start figuring it out. And I, I, you know, I'm the fingering. I'm not really. So it's the left hand fingering. I'm really concerned, con, like trying to figure out how that's going to happen. But uh, it's just a one moment. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not exactly sure how we're going to do it because we got we got our, we have to have a finger in two places at the same time. So you can get it down. You can get it down. You'll you'll be able to do it. It's just we're just gonna have to do it a certain way. So I'll um, uh, so I'll upload. I'll finish out writing out Bill Cheatham with the the correct um, fingerings, and um, or with a with a tab and everything. And I'll upload that over the weekend or maybe Monday morning. I may wait until Monday morning. But yeah, thank you, thank you, John. God bless you too. Thanks, Holly, for moderating. AJ, thanks, Bruce, De Dennis, or Denise, <laughs> Lena. Thank you. You've been. In the lurking back there, I can't believe you all just hang out and listen to me yammer about everything. So uh, probably giving way too much information out. Here's my social security number. <laughs> Jack Lloyd. B.S. Love the butler shirts. Oh, yay. Oh, where are we now? Oh, audio from, okay, Jack Lloyd. Oh, it's funny because 60 minutes, he grew up 60 minutes from, 60 miles from Butler. Well, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be Greencastle where my wife is from. Okay, anyway, wow, this looks so weird, this streamy thing. It's all over the map. Okay, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, uh, get get this thing up. Go to the fret, uh, the uh, Apprentice and um, the uh, the Flat Pick Apprentice and, and download some of those uh, practice tracks. They're a little fast. Um, I will do one at 100 so you have it really slow, okay? Take care. I'll do all that. That I'll do this weekend. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.